Judge Joe Brown's all new barbecue sauce and seasoning, justice in the form of flavor. Law firms will take this as a retainer. What? It must be a law firm when they hungry as hell. Now you gonna help me with this parole I'm dealing with? Judge Joe Brown's all new barbecue sauce and seasoning, justice in the form of flavor. With one taste of our premium blends of all natural ingredients, herbs, and spices, mm, you'll fall in love with meat all over again. Judge Joe Brown's all natural barbecue sauce collection is made up of two zesty flavors original and spicy. There's only one way to bring order back to barbecuing just add Judge Joe Brown's all natural barbecue sauce and seasoning, and you be the judge. I want to sh switch gears. Would you like your turkey roasted or would you like it partitioned and barbecued? Barbecued turkey is very good. Don't forget the barbecue commercial at the end. Oh, we just had one. Oh, that's right. My sauce is good on barbecued turkeys. Yes, it is. All right. So now, I want to go to Cat Wims. Um, he did a live um, stand up um, called Woke Folk. It was live on um, Netflix over the weekend. It was funny. I enjoyed it. But it was one segment in there that he said uh, what black women did during slavery. So I want to play this clip. And I was looking for this clip on X and I couldn't find it. So I Googled it. And this person on YouTube, Morelander, he did a short with this clip. So go to his YouTube and um, subscribe. Um, so I want to play it. Women got black people out of slavery in America. That's the facts. As a group, black women did that without assistance. There was no group of black men that got together. And said, fuck this shit, Nick. We not this. Fuck him up. Because they killed all them niggas that day. <laughs> no, it was black women. Our great great grandmama and them. That just so happened to be blessed with some of the sweetest, most delicious pussy that God oh my has God. ever created. Oh my God. Oh, yes. Black women got black people out of slavery in America. That's the facts. As a group, black women did that without assistance. There was no group of black men that got together. I wanted to play that and I wanted to get your thoughts on that well the artist conveys it uh, quite well bullshit why is he is he trying to just get the pan is he pandering to black women that's why no he it did, he's being sarcastic that's sarcasm in other words you see the slave masters were instructed, and I got this from this think tank more than half a century ago. I spent many a long night reading microfilm copies of slave pamphlets. Number one secret to slavery was be sure and have your slave females put the elements of slavery in their children's heads so they will enslave them for you. It's like horses, and I raised horses on this ranch I had. If you enlisted the mother horse in the process, she would semi-domesticate your new foals for you. If you wean the foals from the mother too early, you had a harder job. She would have the foals go along with you, uh, go along with her. She would stand there when you first started breaking them the saddle. And it would make the process easier. They specifically referred to the horse model and talked about how you should enlist the slave mothers to assist you in enslaving their children or putting the ways of slavery in the child's head. 
They were instructed specifically, even if you have a favorite Negro slave gun bearer, chauffeur, carriage driver, jockey, go for boy, butler, you never go through him in dealing with the slaves on your plantation. You always interface through your slave females. Find those who are good bed wenches. Use them to interface with your southern slave masters and entertain them when they come through. And then when they start getting grayish, make them good mammies and uh, have them interface with your slaves. So always work through the slave female, never through the males. Now, historically, Nat Turner, Dane Mark VC, etc., all of these other people. Were they trannies or something? Because it looks like they were men to me. Um, my grandfather was born in 1850, 11 years before the Civil War started. His daddy had actually been captured from Nigeria. He was a Yoruba and brought over here after the slave trade was over, but he got himself free. I had another great grandfather that decapitated a master and ran off to Canada. I had grandfather that wound up along with another uncle. They murdered two deputy sheriffs for participating in the lynching of another uncle. And that was all back when. So uh, it wasn't exactly that. Black folk were just totally passive, but I don't recall any of the ladies of the family being involved in that particular situation. I studied the question quite a bit, and that goes back, oh, at least 62, 63 years when I started on the subject. And I mean, I was in high school when I did that and there were a few women that did some things um there were women but, women was always involved in this yes but, but to say that you know no women did not initiate it no uh, mm. no I, I wouldn't even say women was so much the backbone but because it I would say it was a collective effort but when we go back in history and read history of any uprising it was led by black men yeah it was and see I don't like want to say, right here I'm right here this, but I just just this right here in Memphis I used to send defendants as part of their probation certain defendants to look at this place it was a mansion house that was once in the middle of a stockyard area. And they had compartments in the walls and underground in this place. And they had slaves who ran away and they hid out in this place and they had it inside of a stockyard uh, area. So it would, the tracks would be obliterated and the men dug a tunnel three quarters of a mile underground to the Mississippi river and laid down some mine tracks and some mining carts. So when steamboat captains who were part of the underground railroad system came by and they were put on notice, they would send slaves down uh, these tracks so they could secretly get on board the slave ship. And it went right next to where they, to this day, have a fenced off what used to be the main auction block for the slave auction facility that was nearby. So this would be primarily men doing this kind of thing. And think, there think, were thousands went through. I think it's because of Harriet Tubman. I mean, what, that's all people talk about is Harriet Tubman and the Underground Railroad. But... You know, this is they're they're leaving out a whole lot of other context. So, you know, yeah, help. they are. She yeah. did great stuff, but I mean, right, she right, got right. two hundred fifty people. She helped out. I mean, look at Frederick <laughs> Douglass. <laughs> Frederick <laughs> Douglass got thousands of black folk free. He shot head out with slave catchers when he escaped. 
So I, I, mean, have I have a question real quick, and then we got to move on to the next um, topic. No downing the women, but that was sarcasm, what he was right. doing on the sarcasm, comedic thing. Sarcasm, not fact. Um, people in the chat are saying, a couple people are saying, did you say you were mixed or biracial? What the fuck is biracial? Excuse my language and mixed. There is everybody. Look. <laughs> I'm the brightest thing in my family on this generation. My parents were quite brown. All right. I've got one grandmother who had an Irish father who had a liking for a New Orleans fancy hoe. And he used to knock it out, I guess. They got married. So I had a real dark-skinned grandfather who was uh, one of Bishop Mason's first disciples and took Kojic from Memphis to Kansas City in 1896 and started Kojic in Kansas City. He real dark-skinned guy. I last saw him when I was uh, about in law school. And he wanted him a high, bright, fancy woman, so he got my grandmother. Now, my other grandmother was a Choctaw, and my other grandfather was dark-skinned, and his daddy was a Yoruba district sub-chieftain from Nigeria, the one that got kidnapped after the slave trade by those bitches in Dahomey that are known and glorified by that garbage known as the woman king sleaze shit glorifying those helpers for sitting there participating in the slave trade and the, under the employ of uh, mm -hmm. the Belgians and the English. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, he didn't get captured by them, but by some Domiums and man, that whole premise was garbage anyway. So bottom line is, is no, Right. Uh uh. What the hell am I talking about? I'm mixed. God damn it. What's that mean? They had this thing, you know, like uh any person with any known colored ancestry will be considered colored for purposes of these statutes regulating the interaction between colored and white people. Right. And by the way, that's even a farce too. I did some research on that. I don't want to go with no, I, I, it doesn't take long, but I went through the code books for every single one of the former states in the Confederacy, mm -hmm. the 11 of them, up until the late 1920s, every single one of them had a code section that says any person with no more than such and such percent of known colored ancestry may apply to a court in this state or official decree of Caucasian status upon providing two witnesses, three witnesses, whatever it was, of good character and appearing to be essentially white to the satisfaction of the judge or chancellor said party shall be entitled to a declaration of Caucasian status. Right. A lot of white folk took advantage of themselves, took advantage of that. Why? The rich Southern plantation owners had lost sometimes all of their sons in the Civil War. Mm -hmm. So when they died, all of their money would go back to the state of Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, North Carolina, whatever it was. So they didn't want that to happen. So they pushed for statutes so that the favorite children they had by their favorite slave mistresses could be declared white and, inha and inherit the stuff. So some states, it was one-fourth like Arkansas and Mississippi, one-eighth like Tennessee, uh, other places. Uh, Louisiana was one-sixteenth. That had to have the least. But, you know, yeah. it is what it is. And then early 30s, they started putting up anyone not heretofore declared Caucasian will be considered colored with any known colored ancestry and by the end of the 30s it was that one drop rule they couldn't undo what they'd already declared so they didn't even mention it anyone with any known colored ancestry will be uh considered colored for purposes of these statutes so you got one drop in you that means you are what you are 
according to American tradition. And by the way, that status came from your mama. Now, back to this. No, we got to finish. We got to move on. No, I I know. This is just real important, real quick. 15 seconds. seconds. Okay. Get a DNA test. You might be surprised at what you have in you. If you're black, you probably have an awful lot of white in you and a lot of Chinese, by the way. So if you're white, you might find that you have as much black in you as some blacks or most blacks have white in them. And by the way, there's this thing called half moons. That's a genetic marker. If you've got half moons at the base of your fine fingernail, that means you have some recent African ancestry. So Blonde head, blue eyed, green eyed, red head, brother, hi, you got enough in you.